Excel has recently released this awesome new family of functions that allows you to get results back in multiple rows or columns. This is called dynamic arrays, and I'm gonna go through a ton of them in this video. My name is David Malayman. I have tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Power BI, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tech of the Workplace, I'm covering on my channel. So check out the rest of the stuff if you like what you see. So um, let's get started. So equals text split. This cell comma column delimiter is going to be that. Close my brackets and I get it like this. And then I can drag it down and I see UK slash London. Look that when I click on every one, I get this blue outline around all the other cells. Now, if you do have some text here, then it's going to give you the spill error. That's what happens with dynamic arrays. And also you can do a row delimiter so then it would return in multiple rows instead of columns and what to do with empties. And there are some more advanced things that I don't tend to use here. Unique, love unique. You can select a column, and even though there might be some duplicates, it will give you just the values that are not. Note that it gives you a zero where there's a blank. You can, with a lot of dynamic arrays, replace that by doing if this is equal to speech marks, speech marks, then return speech marks, speech marks, otherwise return, and then you have the whole formula here again. Close your brackets, and then it will give you it like that. And this is all well and good, but what about if you want to sort it? So you can also have equal sort unique. And then you can do this on its own as well. And then it will give it to you like that. Not that it has a zero, but we know how to get rid of that. So sort will give you the ability to sort by something that is in the range. So if you have it with more columns, you can sort it by something that's in the range. And sort index will be the number of column that you choose. However, if you want something more elaborate, equals sort by. And I can have, for example, all of these columns. And I want to sort by this column, the age column. And then I want to sort ascending or descending, one minus one. And then I get it like this. Note that you have to change these two dates. Control shift three is my way of doing that. And then these are going to show you the zeros, but we know how to get rid of those. Filter equals filter where I'm going to take all of, say, these columns, where the third column is greater than 40. And then I can have this. Note that because I use the headers and the header is technically text that's greater than that value, it works. But if I was to say is less than 40, then it would just give me without the headers. So we'll look at how to get the headers a little bit later on. Again, notice the issue with the dates that I fixed it. So transpose allows you to do all of this, close my brackets, and then it will show it to me like this. So it's switched it from this being the headers to this being the headers now. Uh, VStack, VStack allows you to stack multiple tables together. I'm actually going to get rid of these equals VStack I'm going to select all of this, comma, and then all of this. Close my brackets. Then I have all of my data from both of the data sets. Note for the filter, what you could have done is you could have said VStack and then get the headers. And then press a comma and then get that. And then this will get you your headers. We're also going to look at how to manipulate which columns you want a little bit later on. So here we have some ages and we want to get the count. So I can write equals frequency, and that is going to be looking at this data, or rather this data. This is all of my VStack. Then my bins array is going to be these ones, and press enter, and it's going to return all of these rows. So there are two people who are under 18. There are one pe person between 18 and 30, five people between 45. And here we can see, for example, 17 and 15, these are the two below 18, like that. I quite like this one. It's uh, the most flexible of the ways to do this. There are a few ways to do this. Now we have picking things, so choose rows. I can say equals choose rows. You get choose columns as well that we'll cover in a bit. So I can say from these, give me row number one, which is the headers, six, two, four, in whatever order that you want. And then take will be equals take. And I select my array, and then I can take the first six rows. This will be the first six rows. So that's the header and five rows of data. I could also have said minus six, and this will be the six rows from the bottom. So these ones. And here I can say drop. So drop is the opposite. Drop will say from all of this data, return me 
everything but drop the first three rows, the top three. Or again, I could say drop the three bottom rows like that. Now for these ones, I can go here and I can say, well, I want to look at columns instead of rows. So I'm going to say, take just the first two columns like that and drop everything else. You could have both of them that you choose as well. I've rarely used it for columns, mostly for rows. So choose calls on HStack. These are kind of similar to what we've done before, but I use these for various different instances of choosing the columns. I actually use these two a lot more than the others. So I could say equals choose calls. And from this one, I will say, give me the first column, then the third column, then I can close my brackets, or I can even say then the second column. So you can do it in any order that you want, like this. HStack can do a similar thing to VStack with multiple arrays, but what I tend to use it for is something like this, where I choose the column, then I choose this column, then I choose this column like that. So I kind of manipulate it by referring to the columns, and that way if I insert a row, a column, then this one will show me gibberish zero results, but this one will still be correct. Note you do have the zeros here. Uh, we talked about how to get rid of the zeros in the earlier one. Equals expand. So expand can take all of this. And then I can say that I want that to be, for example, 12 rows and five columns. And it's gonna show me like that. But if I use the last input, which is pad width, speech marks, speech marks, it's gonna show it to me like that. I've never actually used this, but I guess you might have a situation where something needs something of a defined size and that will work for it. Uh, resizing things. So wrap rows of all of this, comma, I'm going to say two. We'll show it to me in two columns. Again, I have pad width. So I can say speech marks, speech marks is the most common one you'll use. Wrap calls is the other way around. So wrap calls, and I choose this one, comma two. It will now give me a matrix the other way around. I can get rid of the NA in the same way. Then you can go the other way. You can go back to a column equals two col, two column, select these, and then close your brackets. Note that when you select a, an array that's a full array, it will start with the left topmost cell and then put a hash next to it. Whereas if I do something like that, it's a normal cell reference, but it puts the hash when it's exactly that. Equals two row. We'll do the opposite. It can convert this into a row like that. There are extra inputs here for what to do with empties and errors. And then whether to scan by column or row, in this case, whether to go whoop, whoop, or whoop, 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 like that. So here we are in the generate tab, and you can have, for example, equals sequence. And I can say for five rows and three columns, give me a number that starts at 60 and goes up in increments of three, like that. Note that if you leave that, you would just have one to five. Equals rand array would be a kind of a similar concept to generate something that is six rows and two columns and give me numbers between 20 and 90 and they must be integers so I'm going to say true there close my brackets and this does recalculate every time you do something new uh, stock history so I'm going to do the stock I'm going to use the exchanger actually to GBP USD and then my start date is going to be this cell. I'm going to close my brackets there, and I get the date and the close price of that date. But I can do something even more if I do end date, and I can do, for example, today's date, like that. And now it will generate every single day what the difference is and what the change is, like that. So it's a really, really cool function here that you can use. Great. Next, go to matrix next. So here I've got a sequence and a sequence. If you want to do a times table, you can do equals M mult. Matrix multiplication, this one and this one. They have to be opposite sizes. So just double click those and then you have, yeah, your times tables from when you're a kid. Six times six is 36. Seven times five is 35, etc. They have to be uh, opposite lengths. So if this one was nine by one and this one's one by eight, it would not work. Uh, you also have m unit, so equals m unit. This is the unit matrix. I'm going to do three. It's going to have one, one, one going down and zeros elsewhere. You might remember this from maths in school. Uh, m determ uh, for this one is actually going to give you a number. So I guess I'm not going to count that, but it is kind of doing certain manipulation to multiply things together. And m inverse. 
of this one. It's doing the inverse of a matrix, which is kind of a complex mathematical system that I'm not going to go through in this section. But yeah, those are the dynamic array functions. I hope you enjoyed that. My name is David Nyman. I have tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tecla Workplace, I'm covering on my channel. So subscribe if you like this kind of information. If you're a Google Sheets person, then I have an equivalent one on Google Sheets. Uh, Google Sheets did just release a bunch more that are very similar to Excel's. So they just released um, their version of TechSplit is called Split. They have this one and this one. Their sort is a lot stronger than Excel's, so they don't need to sort by because this one can do all of what these two can do just in one. The filter allows for multiple filter ranges. Uh, they have these ones as well. And they have all of these except for expand, but I don't really have a use case for expand, so I haven't used them myself. And they have these ones. Uh, the other stock history is Google Finance, but they have these two. And they have the matrix manipulation ones as well. So I have another video that I'll link to about that. They also have some new ones Excel does not. So for example, sort n, array constrain, they have import range, they have query, which is the mother of all dynamic array functions and one of my most watched videos on my YouTube channel. <laughs> so check that out if you're a Google Sheets person. Thanks for watching.